Hi, everybody. Hey. You want to talk about something flashy? Always. You want to talk about the patch instead? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some new organizational tools that have been built into the Granime 3 patch window. They're a little bit different than the way the Granime 2 worked. Um, we're talking about stages. We're talking about grouping fixtures. Uh, and there's even some filtering that's been thrown in there now. Having a really good understanding of these is going to help you a lot with the organization within your patch. Let's start with stages. A stage is a 3D space that holds all of your fixtures and your 3D environment objects. And you can have multiple stages in one show file. So each stage has its own fixture and object list. And in the patch window, you can choose which stage you're viewing with this button in the upper right hand corner. In 3D, you don't see all the stages at once, but you can open multiple 3D windows, each with a different stage assigned to it. Even though the fixtures are separated between the stages, all users can still access all of the fixtures in all of the stages. The stage owns the fixtures, so if you were to delete a stage, you delete all the fixtures and all of the programming that went with it. Yeah, it is possible to copy fixtures from one stage to another, uh, but it really just takes the fixture container. It won't have a fixture ID or the patch information because you can't double those up within a show file. It just wouldn't work. So why would we use these? Uh, one of the ideas is you would build the stages to mimic uh, multiple physical stages that are being controlled from the same show file. So, for example, a, a festival with multiple stages or a TV show with multiple sets. I think for me, um, what I'm really excited to use it for is uh, cloning within my show file. So, for example, taking a touring show and cloning it to a festival rig. So like in the past, what I'd have to do is I would export the festival show file, the fixture patch layers, and import it into my show file, then take those fixtures and in 3D, slide them over on the x-axis so that they were out of the way of my main rig, and then make new camera views to find the festival rig. If in Grandma 3, I can just export the festival rig as its own stage and then import it into my show file, that saves me that sliding step. And, and also, like, I just, I really do like the organization of, in the patch window, seeing my stage versus the festival stage. Totally. Okay, back in the patch window. You probably noticed this layer button on the left-hand side. Now, this is not the same as the Grandma 2 layers, but when used in combination with filters, you can organize your fixture data in a way that's visually similar. Layers and classes are first going to come into play if you're using MVR to bring in your Vectorworks plot. The layers and classes in Vectorworks become the layers and classes in here. Regardless of whether you are or aren't using MVR, you can make your classes and layers anything that you like. They're really just labels that can be applied to fixtures on any and all of your stages. Once created, you can use them with the filter option to sort the patch a bit like Grandma 2 layers. Filters aren't restricted to classes and layers. They'll work the same way in other columns like IDs or fixture types as well. You can even filter through a range, like a range of fixture IDs or DMX addresses. You can also apply filters to multiple columns simultaneously. For example, you could use filters to show you only a particular fixture type with a layer called floor light. Filtering is a way to sort and drill down data on your stage. If you're thinking about organizing your fixtures, then we got to talk about grouping fixtures. Yeah, grouping fixtures are like a parent fixture uh, with all the little child fixtures bundled inside of it. Uh, so it allows you to expand or collapse all the information in there. And if you don't have any grouping fixtures, but you want to, you can add one. You'll find it under the generic fixture manufacturer. Then you can use the cut and paste tools to move existing fixtures in or out of a grouping. A grouping fixture doesn't get a patch because it's an organizational tool, but it can get a fixture number. Giving it a fixture number means it can also show up in the fixture sheet. You have the same functionality of expanding and collapsing, but you have programming benefits as well. When you select the grouping fixture and apply parameters to it, this applies those values to all of its child fixtures simultaneously. If you don't want to see it or use it in the fixture sheet, just don't give it a number. Yeah. That way you're just using it for organization within the patch. So let's take a look at these concepts one more time. So you've got your show file. Within your show file, 
say you have two stages. Each stage has its own collection of fixtures and maybe grouping fixtures. Because remember, grouping fixtures are optional. Even though there's no crossover between the fixtures of the two stages, all of the fixtures can be accessed by any and all of the users in your session. You can still use worlds, and worlds can be any combination of the fixtures in any of your stages. You could have a world that's all stages, a world for stage A, another for stage B, one world that's some fixtures from stage A and a bit from stage B, whatever. So, even though it wasn't flashy, I hope it was helpful. Happy organizing. And cheers! cheers.